Jonathan Gomez is one of the top U.S. men's national team and L3 prospects currently. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tacmer TV. Today we have a great interview with Jonathan Gomez, one of the most promising left backs for the United States and Mexico right now. We'll be talking about his FC Dallas Academy days, U.S. men's national team, L3, and his transfer to Real Sociedad. So sit back, relax, hit that like button if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, because I will not be requesting it during the interview. All right, so let's play the intro and let's bring on Jonathan Gomez. All right, everyone, welcome to Tacomer TV. We have another special guest here today, Jonathan Gomez. May I say Real Sociedad player right now? Uh, uh, currently a Lou City player, but obviously the, the move has been announced. Okay, so Lou City still, still got a season to finish and then you'll make your move. That is official right now. And then also I'd like to thank Marcus O'Malley from Chasing the Cup for helping the interview happen, get a hold of Jonathan for us. So thank you very much. And obviously thank you, Jonathan, for being here as well. Uh, thank you for having me on. So Jonathan, we're going to go right to it. Not much of a conversation. It's just an interview. We want to learn more about you. So yeah. you are also a player that went through the FC Dallas Academy, like many talents from the United States nowadays, probably unquestionably the best academy in the United States. And obviously it worked as we saw your success in USL and even getting a transfer to a good club abroad. Can you talk about a little bit your years on the FC Dallas Academy? I know you played a more advanced role. They moved you to a left back. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, so my, actually the reason we came or I went in the FC Dallas Academy was largely because of my brother. My brother was, uh, we used to play for Solar, which was another big club in Dallas. And my brother was recruited by FC Dallas and he joined. Um, I stayed at Solar and he really, my brother, Johan, is really the one that opened up that door at FC Dallas. So he was there and then I joined, I think two years later. And yeah, like you said, my first year, um, my first year in the academy, I was actually a left wing slash like 10 role. So it was more like an attacking role. And I would say that for sure that year I struggled. Um, like I, I, w I wasn't playing as much. And then towards the end of the year, I'd say maybe like the last third of the season. One training, my coach was just like, um, I think I think you have the qualities. Like, I think you're aggressive. I guess he said, I think you have good attacking qualities and I think you're aggressive enough to, to defend well. And he put me at left back for a training session. And ever since then, I never looked back. And I mean, the rest of the season I played, I uh, started all the games at left back. And then into the next season, U15 year, uh, with my coach, Mikey, um, he gave me the faith and, and he trusted me at left back and I played like almost all the games at left back and then transitioning into U17 year uh, under Lucci and it was Mikey still as well. He transitioned with us. It was, that was O2s, but I was playing up along with Beppe, uh, Justin Che, Colin Smith. You probably heard those names. Um, Justin has been here. Uh, Justin came to the channel earlier this year before before he moved to Bayern uh, for oh, yeah? the long Justin yeah. was here as well. No, that's, yeah, me and Justin are pretty good friends. Um, yeah, and then that year, um, in the U17 year, wow, that was the year North Texas started, or like halfway through the year, because obviously our season started in August, and then North Texas started, and like their preseason started like in January of 2019 and that's when Lucci and Mikey both got moved up to the first team and then well yeah a lot of the academy players were I wouldn't say a lot but quite a few of the academy players were called into like North Texas preseason um there's a lot of names obviously you would know Tanner um Dante Brian yeah but, I mean Brian was already signed to the first team but yeah he was um he, he obviously played with North Texas that year um me and my brother um and i mean a, a lot of players um and i was able i was fortunate enough to make my debut that may i think it was in may and then i, I went on to play i think 10 games i started 10 games and i was able to play in the championship and and we won um but yeah i think that 
like you said, they help develop players, and I think they developed me into into a very good player and obviously a good left back and set me up uh, to be successful. That's interesting. That actually, what you just said is the first time I hear a story going towards that in the FC Dallas Academy. I've heard many different players compliment the academy. Justin, when he was at the channel, was one of them, and we talked to other guys that were involved. Um, the first time, this is interesting because you have a coach that you were actually then an attacking midfielder slash left winger, and you have a coach in the academy that had the vision of putting you at the left back, and he maximized apparently, right? He maximized your potential. He found your actual position rather than giving up on you or persisting on something that wasn't so that's a good coach right there yeah yeah um, that was uh felipe merino i don't know if he's gonna watch this but yeah he was uh he was the one that converted me from a winger so i was 10 and uh into a left back so you touched on most of the topics i want to talk about the fc dallas academy even mainly one of the questions i had was that why did you move back and you pretty much answered it beforehand regardless talked about North Texas, talked about players you played with, um, including Justin, that's still there. Now it brings me to the second question here. So you were in the academy, but you didn't stay in FC Dallas. You went to play in USL. Can you walk us through why that happened? If there, it was just a personal, just tell us about it. Why did you make that decision? Yeah, I felt like I I wanted to play um, first team minutes in a in a pro environment um, and I think that Lou City, uh, I think that my goals um, lined up with the goals that um, they had here for me short term and long term um, in terms of Europe and, and all that. Um, obviously the coaching staff, John Hackworth isn't here anymore, but he was a coach when I came and he obviously had a lot of experience uh, coaching young players as myself in the national team. And as well as our head coach now, Danny, Danny Cruz has recent playing experience and now he's obviously a head coach. So gaining experience as a coach. But yeah, I think that it's just, it was just that, like my goals um, short term and long term lined up better with uh, what they had for me here rather than at, at FC Dallas. Got it. So it was more, it was just strictly a career decision. And when you moved to Little City, was your plan already to go right away abroad? Or did you have any ambition of playing MLS early in your career? Because your brother went abroad early too. Yeah. Uh, was that your goal as well? That's what you wanted to do right away? And you're, you accomplished it now because you're heading there, obviously. Yeah, I think once I made, once I made the move to Little City, um, I had in my head, that I was gonna make the move um, to Europe. I wanted, I obviously saw my brother do it. He went to Porto, and um, I, I mean, I've always wanted to be like my brother. But that, I wouldn't say that's the only reason that I, I wanted to go to Europe. But um, I saw him do it, and I thought I could do it as well. So yeah, well, I'd say when I came here, I was already determined um, to make the jump to Europe. And obviously, if it didn't work out, then yeah, I would, I would try to either stay here, keep playing, keep developing or make the jump into MLS. But I think that if I would have wanted to go into MLS, I'm, I probably would have stayed at Dallas and, mm. and see what happened there. Yeah, what I like, when I hear something like that, what I like is I don't think staying in MLS would have been staying in your comfort zone for you or your brother, especially at your age. It's never easy to play against grown men, 25, 26 year olds when you're 18, 17. But moving abroad is getting even more out of your comfort zone, right? You gotta stay away from your family, different culture, different league depending on the league you go even a different language right luckily enough you you speak spanish so you will be fine in regards to that but you could have gone to a country that speaks german or whatsoever so you're getting out of your comfort zone you're challenging yourself and, and you're going to a tough league too so i think i th i think getting out of the comfort zone is never the wrong step never the wrong the wrong decision that's what i would think yeah and i think um i mean this is just my opinion but i think it's it's better to do it sooner rather than later um like you said, especially the language, yeah, it's not something that I'll personally have to experience, maybe just a little bit because the Spanish that I speak is a little bit different to Spain Spanish. Um, but I mean, I use my brother as an example again. I mean, he went to Portugal and Spanish is similar to Portuguese, but he had to learn Portuguese and now he's in Germany playing. And I know he's having, not, not that he's struggling, but having to learn German. And I mean, I'm guessing it's a, it's a, it's a thing that a lot of uh, players that go abroad uh, have to deal with. Uh, I speak Portuguese. Oh, really? I, I I lived 10, no, actually 12 years in Brazil. Oh. So I speak Portuguese. Portuguese from Brazil, right? It's a little different from, from Portugal, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's, like that's, that's what my brother told me. He said, um, 
Like he, I think he said he had a Brazilian on his team at Porto. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that the Brazilian, like they speak faster and it was harder to understand than the, the Portuguese from Portugal. That's what he said. Yeah, more about. slang words too from, I know some friends from Portugal too. And it seems like in Brazil, we have more slang words. It's more just the Brazilian culture overall. But this is, since you touched on that, I have a question. So in your household, among your brother, your, your parents, everything, when, you, when you're with your family, you mostly speak Spanish? Oh yeah, it's it's Spanish 100%. Um, I know it's something that my parents uh, have always emphasized. It, it's actually the language that they um, they first um, taught us, and then we we learned English in school and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, when when we're with our family, um, we speak Spanish, and I mean sometimes it's English. Sometimes I'll, I mean when I call my brother. Um, it might be in English, but for the most part, it's, it's Spanish. Yeah, very similar to me here with my family and everything, because I speak with them. My dad and my mom always in Portuguese. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've lived more in the United States where I went to school here, but it's a very similar situation. Which brings me to another question, which is actually probably the topic that most fans are overly interested in, because the new trending thing right now, Jonathan, is... U.S. men's national team versus L3. Everything is about that. It's not just in the field. It's also the dual national battle. You've seen the recent ones. We had someone here in the channel, Julian Araujo, too, that was in that mix. Now he made his decision. We had David Ochoa, Ricardo Pepe that you played with recently. So you've been to youth camps of both national teams. Most recently, you were in Spain with Mexico, and there were actually many Mexican-Americans in that camp, including yeah. David Ochoa was there and many others. So here's my question to you. We already know the answer that you're still, you can confirm if I'm wrong, obviously. You're still thinking you don't have a, a, your mind set on one country or another. Yeah. But can you walk us through, maybe talk a little bit about the L3 camp? How was it for you, the experience? Did you like it? Did you not like it? And even talk about what teams did you face there? I, I heard you played against England. How was it? Yeah. Uh, so you mean this camp that, that just passed uh, yeah. last week or two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was good. Um, Obviously, that's very they're very general, but we played against England and France, so two uh, quality opponents. And on a, on a personal note, I was able to play in both play and start in both games, so I was thankful for that. But I think um, as a team, obviously we're coming together. Um, U.S. and Mexico are both trying to um, start, I guess, this O3 U20 cycle um, for qualifying which not only qualifies you for the u20 world cup but is also qualified for the olympics so it's that's something they were harping on a lot during this camp um that i mean we have to qualify ourselves for the world cup but we're also going to qualify the u23s for the, the olympics um so it's super important but i think that it went well um i learned i learned a few things and i mean at the end of the day you or i just um, take everything and try to continue to develop and um, I mean take take things in um, to ultimately whenever I have to make my decision um, be well prepared for it yeah I hope the United States takes this Olympic cycle seriously and this is not even about you this is just my opinion you're just letting it out because Mexico has always done a great job in regards to Olympics qualifying and performing in the Olympics we have been missing Olympics that's just something that's been frustrating me and you've been to the Mexican camp recently. The United States does have a camp in November, and I know we might have camps later on. If they call you to a youth camp, you also want to be a part of it? You want to go get to know it, or you want to stay a little bit away from it for now? What, what's going through your mind in regards to that? Um, well, for this, I think the camp that you're talking about upcoming, um, even if I was invited, I wouldn't be able to go because of playoffs. I might, I'll be at playoffs mm -hmm. in Blue City. Um, but I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna like decline call ups. Like I'm not gonna decline going with the U.S. to go with Mexico. Or decline, decline going with Mexico to go with the U.S. Um, I mean, obviously until my, I make my decision, but I don't think I don't think really I'm there yet. Uh, last but not least, in regards to that, uh, this is just a question that if you if you're allowed to answer or not, uh, you've obviously been in touch with Tata Martino, I believe, because he's involved with everything related to recruiting with Mexico. Um, that's what I heard from other players as well. Has, have you also been in touch with Greg? Has Greg been in touch with you um, or the U.S. Federation one way, shape or form? Yeah, I, I feel like the all both federations are always in, 
in continuous contact, not always with me, sometimes with my coach, Danny Cruz. But to answer your first question, I um, – or Greg, uh, Coach Greg did call me um, before I was put on the preliminary Gold Cup roster. So this was after I'd gone with the senior Mexican national team to train. Um, he called me, I think, probably the following week when I came back and talked to me a little bit um, and then told me that I was going to be on, on the preliminary Gold Cup roster. Um, but other than that, I, I haven't really heard from him. Um, I've Congratulations heard, on that, by the way, even though it's late. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, other than that, I know obviously he's been busy World Cup qualifying. I mean, both federations, um, to be fair, um, have been super busy with that. And obviously those are super important games. Um, but I haven't heard directly from Greg since then. I have heard from the Federation, though. Got it. Yeah, so they're in touch. It's it's what they can do for now. And you're right, absolutely right. They do have to focus on qualifying the World Cup right now. And that's what both Federations are probably very focused on. Now, one thing we want to move on. We're getting close to the end here. One thing I wanted to talk about was the move to Real Sociedad, right? So you're going to finish USL season, maybe win it. We'll see. And... Hopefully. You're going to make a move to Real Sociedad. Originally, when you moved there, are you what? what's their plan with you right now? Are you going to go, are they planning on putting you at the senior squad? Are you still going to be on maybe one of the, the youth teams? Are you maybe going to go on a loan? Have they told you what their plan is? And how did this transfer go? How did it go? Why did you choose them if you can, if you want to tell us? Yeah, so I'll start from the beginning. Um, I think that like in terms of scouting, uh, scouting, obviously, because of COVID this past year or two, um, has changed a lot. Uh, you haven't, I mean, first of all, there haven't really been games. Obviously, now we're, we're, we're having games and everything. But uh, in terms of travel, maybe clubs couldn't send scouts. So a lot of it was online. Um, and they actually, so I guess they scouted me and saw me. They actually ended up reaching out to my dad uh, through his blog, the Gomez Way blog. And then my dad uh, received an email. And then from there uh just uh led them to my agent so that's how the interest first started um and yeah i was able to visit back in july and uh see the facilities um and see uh see where, where i would train where i would live um and obviously meet some of the staff and as of right now i think i'm going i'm gonna start with the b team which plays in the second of it spanish second division and are one of the only few clubs to do so um, and from there i mean move up to the first team as i mean as i develop and as i'm ready okay so i didn't i actually didn't know what you just said i didn't know that real sociedad had a team at the la liga too so yeah. you'll still be playing at a professional league so it's not like you're going to be in a youth team that's interesting and probably probably a move up and, and honestly it's also building your career right your goal is going to be to move up to the senior team and if you're with the reserves eventually they could just pull you up mid-season and you just turned 18 a month ago yeah exactly i just turned 18 yeah, a month so. ago so that was pretty much it i was going to ask you just a silly question to finish up is there any prospects right now in, the, in mls that you're close with any good friends that you have in mls that are prospects not veterans yeah um so you're right i am pretty tight with uh kevin kevin part of this but i did mm -hmm. want to kind of deflect the question back to you and ask you how how you heard that so your friend Marcus, um, uh, I talked, I talked to Marcus. I, I so I talked to Marcus, and people can know this. Marcus O'Malley from Chasing the Cup. He was helping me get the interview set up, and I asked him. So, anything you know about Jonathan? Because he said he's met you before, and you guys talked a few times. So, yeah. So I said, and he's like, oh, he's close friends to. Because I mentioned Kevin Paredes a lot because another big talent in MLS right now, right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so and then he mentioned that that was the reason why I mentioned when I message you asking about Kevin Paredes but are you friends with anyone else there and how did you meet him how do you know him uh I met him at a at a U16 camp hmm. probably I think it was May 20 I don't know if it was 2018 or 2019 but we had a tournament in Czech Republic and we ended up being roommates and that's where we became close and then since then uh we, we've just always talked and I mean we still talk um every once in a while we'll FaceTime but we text almost every day. Hey, you guys are competing for the same position right there. Left wing, left wing back, left back. It's kind of like the same area right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I talked to him a little bit about that. I've I seen he's been playing some left wing back with um, with DC. And sometimes, obviously, at the, at the left wing. And sometimes um, here with Lucidity, we'll play in a 3-5-2. And I'll be in that same wing back spot. 
Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I'd say he's definitely the one I'm closest with. I'd say I talked to um, some of that talked to uh, Justin Che, Colin Smith, both at FC Dallas, mm -hmm. um, Tyler Freeman. Also talked to him. I wouldn't say a lot, but I do talk to him maybe on a, on a weekly basis. Um, let's see. What about Ricardo Pepe? Have you been in touch with Ricardo or not? Not too much. Not really. Not really. We yeah uh, we, we haven't talked in in a while. Um, other than that, I don't know. My mind's my mind's kind of blanking here. Um, <laughs> well, if if the, if your mind is blanking, it's probably players that you randomly talk to. Those are probably the closest ones you have. Yeah, uh, I'd say I'd say at the beginning of the season, I was um, talking more or less to Caden Clark, but now we haven't really talked um, probably in a, in a few months. So, Jonathan, that's all we wanted to do here. Get a little bit more so the U.S. Men's National Team fans could get to know more about you. And we look forward to hopefully having you. I'm not going to lie with the U.S. Men's National Team. I'm not cheering for you to pick L3. Mm -hmm. I, I really, honestly, I think it would be a terrible decision if you pick L3, if you ask me. But <laughs> that is your decision to make there. Um, hopefully we have you in the United States. Uh, and again, wishing you the best of luck at Real Sociedad or whatever club you head to in the future. And you're very talented. We've been seeing USL. Time for you to take it to the next level. So thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it.